Hello, I'm, my name is Thomas Hören. I'm a law professor from the University of Münster, so-called ITM. Uh, we have dealt with China and Chinese information law since uh, s several decades. I'm happy to talk to you on a very important and controversial topic, chat GBT and the ethical and legal questions of the product. In Europe, uh, we have uh, very often and very recently uh, started a controversial debate on the use of artificial intelligence, the so-called generative uh, artificial intelligence and its use in universities. We have two um, sources of problems with that. The first is legal problems, typically copyright law problems, because ChatGPT and other AI tools are using um, the material of third persons for uh, building up the infrastructure. So can ChatGPT use pre-existing information freely to build up its services? Question. The problem is, in Europe, we have a special limitation, a new, new, a new limitation on the use for uh, data mining and the very far-reaching exception includes as well um, AI tools. So the AI people can use the material for data mining, especially with a background in research, and all the authors and creators cannot complain about the use of ChatGPT. Second question, can you get a copyright protection for ChatGPT content. How is ChatGPT content protected? The problem is its content is constructed by machines. It is not a real person, a natural person behind it. So in traditional concepts of copyright law, there's no author. So it cannot be protected by copyright. There are some uh, attempts of inventors and creators to change the law. For instance, in Australia, ChatGPT um, um, creator has started a campaign for getting a copyright protection, but all these attempts are successless. So can be protected by database right? because it's a structure of data um, and the way how data are um, structured can be protected at least in Europe by the so-called sui generis database right. But still, the investor who gets the protection needs to be a natural person. So we have a problem with the concept of personality of the in investor. Some people are thinking that it might be good to have an e-person for ChatGPT, an electronic person, a virtual person. So to extend the concept of personality to a machine. But then seems to be some kind of science fiction. So no government in Europe and the United States is discussing that. At least we have one creator who we can define as a creator. That is a person who is asking ChatGPT. If you're typing in a text a question, 
or ChatGPT, so-called prompt, there might be copyrightable thinking, ideas, knowledge behind that. And that gives the person typing in the questions a kind of copyright. So, at least to say that, all these features are well established now and are very clear. The main problems for the universities is the increasing use of JTBT by students. Students don't type in any papers anymore. They simply ask JTBT, please write me a paper on so and so. And it's very difficult for, in some areas of uh, science to find out whether it was made, the text was made by ChatGPT or not. That is a big problem, especially um, in relation to in relationship to, uh, to Chinese students. We have noticed that Chinese students who want to come to, to Germany use another AI tool called DeepL quite often to translate their papers, which they have written in Chinese, into German, and to send the paper in German to German universities, and to say, yes, I am a, re a real expert in German language. Can we prohibit that? Is it unethical? This is a big problem. Um, many universities are mean, um, now changing their regulations for the students. They have to clearly say, we have not used ChatGPT for producing a paper, or at least, yes, we have used ChatGPT for that part of the paper. That has to be clear. If it is not clear, you are dismissed as a student. But is that fraud? Is that plagiarism to use uh, ChatGPT? That is highly unclear. The universities in Europe are changing their atmosphere and their style. They have to accept that students might use ChatGPT if they cl clearly say we have used it, but it cannot be prohibited per se. That's a new area, a new thinking of the heads of the European universities. Apart from that, we have a general problem behind that. Is it, apart from universities, unethical to use ChatGPT, for instance, for checking the application for a job? The European com um, authorities are planning to have a new AI Act with the beginning of next year. And that includes for the first time a regulation, a general regulation on producing generative AI, such as ChatGPT. There are provisions that the producers of ChatGPT have to prove that they have made a compliance system, that they have made a survey on the implications of the system, that they make it transparent how the system works and how it will evaluate, for instance, in cases of an application. That is the future that will be next year. Um, I have produced a long, long paper on all these questions. The paper, the link can be found in um, the reference section, section for this lecture. If you have questions, do not hesitate to contact me. 
You will find me on Hören, H O E R E N, at uni-münster.de. Thank you for your attention, and I hope my short considerations were worthwhile for your conference. Thank you.